welcome back to Word Blindness Dyslexia Exposed. I am Juliet Hahn, and I'm here with my co-host Brent Sopel. How are you <sighs> on this Wednesday? Hump day. Yeah. My favorite commercial ever. Yep. Hump day. What time is it? That's. I don't know if I know that. What is it? You that? don't know that commercial with the camel? Hope day. Come on. I don't know if I, don't know if I do. Oh, wow. Now wow. I got to look it up. Wow. That noise reminded me of Sesame Street. But now you got to, now you're going to, who, who was it? Yeah. Is it a don't Chicago know. thing or Canada thing? No. <laughs> okay. Um, you're going to pull it up and then I'm going to be like, oh, Just I do the- remember. Guess what day it is? <laughs> you, you never. You can remove up to ten times more earwax. Uh-huh. It's earwax, <laughs> but it's something else. <laughs> okay, so actually, funny enough, we're going to talk about attention deficit today. <laughs> and, that's kind of, and that's kind of a perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what day it is? Guess what Oh, I do remember. Yeah, the... Oh, come on. I know you can hear me. Quick, 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 quick. And then there's an elephant in it. Yeah. Oh, that's not an elephant. That's a Where the fuck did you just get an elephant from? <laughs> um, because the picture wow. looked like an elephant ear. Wow. And um, clearly I am losing my sight, which just made me really sad. Because yeah. when it turned, I was like, oh, that's still a camel. That's still, no matter what angle you look at it, that's a camel. Well, I was going to get in there and close and look because I can't. <laughs> it's very depressing. There's a lot of stuff happening with my body these days. <laughs> that I'm not um, loving or <laughs> enjoying. Some of it I'm enjoying. Some of it I'm not. That, but that's not what we're uh, here to talk about. <laughs> so, how does your how's your ADHD been working? Um, the ADHD. Well, let's first you know, start off. ADHD is the most misdiagnosed learning disorder for girls mm-hmm. in the world. Yes. Um, but the thing is, because I. The thing that's funny, because I, the reason why we're talking about this today is because as we are doing so much stuff with the Sobel Foundation, it comes and goes where people will say to us, oh, wait, I think I actually am dyslexic now, or, oh, wait, I think I'm dysgraphic, and it's, or I'm ADHD, and it, it is kind of comical because especially today, days and age where everything is fast, everything is distraction. You know, everyone feels like they have some sort of ADHD of, of, you know, and yes, we we will give it to people, but it is a chemical imbalance. And there's a lot of things with ADHD that people don't realize. And it's when it gets in, it gets in your life where then it actually hinders parts of your life is really when it becomes a problem. And so for the girls, but I, and we've talked about this before, I presented as a boy, I present as a girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, this is going to be an amazing show. Please take me back to when you presented <laughs> as a boy. Huh? What was your name? Right, I guess I guess, uh-huh. these, I guess these days we can't even talk about that either. Oh, uh-huh. we can because <laughs> this this just became an interesting show. Please tell me all about you okay. identifying as a boy. No, I did not Juliet. Say, okay, I did not say I was identifying as a boy. I presented my intention deficit presented a boy. So I was the outwardly hyperactive. <laughs> I, Fuck so you. everybody, <laughs> so so to to play to that, you know, everybody says, "Oh, I was ADD." So there's that was the old term. There's two types of term: ADHD. I call it ADHD one and two. As you just said, the hyper bounce off the wall. Myself, um, most a lot of boys have that. You know, boys are just boys bouncing off the row. <laughs> Yo, and then there's me, and then there's. <laughs> Jimmy over here, over here, identified. <laughs> and the other one is ADHD two, where it's the day, the daydreaming, and that's where um, a lot of girls um, have that one and get missed, you know, diagnosed mm-hmm. because you you know you're sitting in the you know first you know boys we can't sit in the desk anyways. Now you want to give us ADHD on top of that, 
and girls, you know, it's the daydreaming. So it's, you can be sit there quietly in, in your desk and you, your, your brain could be over in left field or over where, you know, um, everywhere else. So as I, as I like to call it, um, ADHD one and two, one is hyper, you know, hyperactive bouncing off the walls, as you guys all know myself. Um, two is the, uh, daydreaming portion. So that's why I always say ADHD one and two ADD is that old term. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to even take it further. So, so my sister, and we used to call it the hypo and the hyper. So I was the hyper, she was the hypo. And so that is exactly what it is. It's like the daydreamy a lot of times. And the reason why girls are misdiagnosed is because they're not outwardly, uh, and and Mel Robbins actually does a really, really good job of explaining this. She talks about what a girl does is in, like their hyperactivity is actually internal, where a boy's hyperactivity is external. Yeah. Um, I think I probably had, <laughs> I think I had both <laughs> external oh. and internal. When you, rub, you know, when you identify as both, it happens that way. <laughs> like last episode, we talk about me and a tux now, like... <laughs> It's all very confusing for the listeners. Oh no, they're they're right online. They, they're they're on point. What's That's Juliet? why they're back. <laughs> yeah. What what is Julia doing today? Um. So and there's also very different between a an active child and a hyperactive child. So a lot of times people will you know especially as attention deficit kind of came out and. Talk, was talked about more. There's times where it wasn't talked about. There is a lot of different things, but like with a girl, it's it's definitely the, the maintaining focus. But a lot of times, and what Mel Robbins really goes into and talks about the internal struggle that what happens with a and woman, and a lot of times it doesn't percent until hormones. <laughs> Yay, hormones go fuck us again. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. <laughs> yeah. So is that? Uh... <laughs> Is that Jimmy or Juliet talking now? <laughs> that's both. <laughs> well, that's that's a combination. <laughs> yeah, you know, when ADHD, you talk about hormones, but it's we don't have dopamine. Right. You know, we don't have dopamine flowing. You know, all day long through our brain. You know, uh, the way I like to describe it, it's it's a kitchen sink. You know, it's a faucet. You know, that dopamine's, you know, you don't have that faucet on 24 seven. So that water's not flowing. That dopamine isn't flowing, you know, to our brain. You know, I always say sex, drugs, and rock, raw adrenaline yeah. um, is what turns our dopamine on, right? It's crazy. You going a hundred miles, hundred miles an hour down the ski hill and some fucking canary yellow jacket. <laughs> 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 Or, or, or me doing something stupid and you know getting people to laugh you know that that's that's what turns our, our dopamine and then we're like oh my god that feels good mm -hmm. you know, it feels good to have that it turned so on good. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, oh my god it's it's like taking that first thing with a cocaine like oh, wow i like this right you know so it's the big thing that i have is that there isn't a lot of un full understanding. Yo, a kid in class, you know, the teacher's standing at the front of class. You got the class, you got the kid um, who's fooling around and the teacher yells, yo, Brent, you know, I need you to, to do this. When you yell across a classroom or across a, a court, uh, you know, basketball court or a volleyball court or gymnasium or a, a field or anything like that, those words don't get to us. So you have to think of a wall is in between us. So then I don't listen to what the, you know, that teacher says. And then I continue doing what I'm doing. And the teacher's like, you know, fucking kid doesn't listen, right? Kicks me in the hallway. Um, no, I didn't hear those words. You had to come over, kind of get close to my, you know, not nose nose, but get close. Hey, I need you to do this. Oh, now I hear you. You can't yell across the you know, classroom. You've got a lot of, um, you know, kids that are fidget, you know, sit there and fidget, right? Um, I have to fidget. <laughs> yeah. Do you have your Do you have your fish with you today? 
Where's your fish? Um, I don't know where it, I was actually just looking for it and I couldn't find it. Where's your fish? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, there it is. There's <laughs> your fish. There, look at that. See that fish? <laughs> so it's. I have that. I have so many things on my desk. Yeah. But that, that's what we need. Somebody asked me the other day, why is it, why do we, why do we need something in our hands? Right. Why do we have, you know, you know, somebody asked, why can't you pay attention? Well, if you want me to pay attention to what you're saying and focus so hard on what you are saying, I'm focusing on keeping my whole body still, every finger, every toe, every joint, um, everything still that I don't even hear the words that are coming mm-hmm. out, of your, out of your mouth and I, and I miss it. So you want me to sit there and focus? I physically can't. But when I sit there, um, I may be looking at the birds but I'm listening to what you're saying in my own way. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's really, and the one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it is because I've had just recently an, a number of women actually come up to me and, and ask, we're like, Oh, my husband says I'm attention deficit and, and blah, blah, blah. One of the things time blindness is that is a really big thing where you th- <laughs> I, like, I have 20 minutes to leave. I don't leave. Because I'm like, oh, I can get 30 things done. And then I'm late. I mean, that is like my life story all the time. And if I, so I'm either like really baby early. Squirrel. Baby squirrel's always late. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she is, right. Always. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, but I'm either early or, um, and it's not like a little bit early. I'm either like 15 minutes early or whoa, 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 I'm whoa, 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 five whoa. minutes late. Hang on. I know that's it's, not really early to you. Yeah, but that's, no, no, no. If you're not fif- if you, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Yes. Well, you have to. You're so oh. conscious of it. But there's things, and and this is what I think is really um, interesting because I was talking to Danielle, and she's like, "How can you sit and listen on podcast and like and then answer the question after the person's talked five minutes?" And I said to her, "I've had to work at it." really, really hard. I also have had to work really hard at not interrupting people. I've also had to work. Right. And you have to really work hard because I never wanted to be the, you know, when, when people would say attention deficit, you think of the boy that like jumps in front of you as you're talking and is like, you know, just the spaz. And I was always very conscious of that because I never wanted to be that. So I worked really hard and I do work really hard on not interrupting and listening and not yeah. fidgeting in my seat and not like seeming like I'm not listening because I know those things people are sensitive to. And, but people think that kid's an asshole when they do, when he does that. Right. Like, um, he, he's got, he, he, he doesn't want to be, he can't, he cannot help. Can't him. help he, it. Can't, he can't help himself. <laughs> right. So it's, let me be clear. You're going to, you know, you've worked your ass off to, to be able to do that, but that kid's not trying to be, the asshole. I just want to make sure make that yeah, that's mm-hmm. clear. He, he, it's he can't help himself. Yeah, and so a lot of times with girls, how it presents is after they start having their period and the hormones, it becomes this uh, a lot of anxiety, and then it's all internal, and it's like I need to, you know, then then they they put the pressure on themselves, their homework, all of these things have to be done a certain way. And they start putting more pressure. And if they can't do it, then they start beating themselves up. So there is like a very big, um, there is a very big, uh, and it's not self-esteem as much as it it can be, but it is a, um, this thing where it's like this, this mental kind of game you're doing. Again, I don't think I had them. That's why I kind of laugh sometimes. I'm like, oh, I guess I was more of just the, the <laughs> identified on the other side. Oh, Jimmy. But <laughs> because I never really put a lot of pressure on myself to be that perfectionist. And I think just because it was like not going to happen. So I didn't do it. But there's there are a lot of females. And that's what they say later in life as you become a mom. And that's where we've talked about some of my attention deficit really got me. College, we know I was... I was on medication, but a lot of that stuff is where then you start beating yourself up. Like, why couldn't I do this? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Again, men do it, but it's in a different way because our chemistry is, you know, I mean, I was just listening back to some episodes we did way in the beginning for some a parent portal that asked for some, some of our episodes. And it is really interesting because you, we talk about the difference between men and women so much and the difference between, um, 
really how a dyslexic brain and ADHD brain works. And it's very similar to that difference. It's really different. You know, um, it, it's, you know, obviously men and women are, are, are different. We talk, obviously, you, talk, you know, we, we talked about, it, but it's, it's understand, you know, again, knowledge is power, right? You know, how many times you heard me, relatability, right? You know, and that's, we're, we're open on this. That's why we do this podcast. That's why we have these conversations because, you know, you don't, you can't recognize things you don't know or mm-hmm. understand. And um, we're both open, you know, for that reason to hit. Oh, my husband, you know, my husband says I'm ADHD, you know, you know he doesn't you know half the time they don't know. It's just a husband, wife, right? You know, yeah. you're out to lunch or, you know, you're shopping again or you're doing, you know, you're doing like that. But, you know, we live it every day. And that's why we, we talk open and honestly about about us and about what goes on in our kids and how we're affected so that, you know, the listeners can relate to it in a, you know, in a different way that they've you know never related to things before, probably. Like a real time. I mean, one of the things, one of the things that is, and I think we've talked about, like, I can't, if I put something away, it's gone. Like it is dead to me. So, and this is a hundred percent an attention deficit thing. And it's really annoying. It's really annoying for the people around. Like, <laughs> thank God Dan is not like a neat freak, but I have to, like, if, if bills are put in a drawer, oh. they're gone. Mm-hmm. my clothes if I have clothes in a closet like I have a closet and I have a dresser I don't use really kind of either of them I have like a pile <laughs> because if they go in the drawer or in the closet I forget that they're there mm-hmm. and it's it's literally out of sight out of mind and that is such an attention deficit thing um, and it's it's one of those things that I'm like eh, it, 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 it is what I it is I just wear the same thing over and over again <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, th- I mean, that is like, I all of a sudden will be like, oh my God, this sweater. I forgot that I had that two years ago. And Dan's like, it was in your fucking drawer. You forgot. But I really, it, I can't. Like it, it is. So sometimes it's annoying though. Cause I'll be like, oh God, I can't find, like if I've gone on a business trip, I can't find, I have to go buy something new because I can't find where, what pile I put it and what, like someone put it away. Right. Cause it was like not the season. That sometimes can be annoying and exhausting because I really don't have a- any sense of that. Again, if a bill is put away or papers are put away, so I have to put things on like the bulletin board. I have to like stick things to places. Like if the kids are like, we need to sign this up. You can't do it now. You have to do it in three weeks. I'm like, I don't fucking forget. So I have to put it somewhere so I don't forget. Um, My tax messages, I well, once a week, once every two weeks, I've got to go back to yeah. You know, like, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 text messages back. All right. Who did I not respond to? Mm -hmm. What did I forget to do? Yep. And that. Oh, I forgot about that. And that's why we got paper and pen. But that's why it's constantly running through our heads. Now, someone could be listening to this and be like, well, I do that. And I'm not attention deficit. They're just have like a very busy life. Right. Um, I had another friend that just hired an executive functioning coach because she's wildly ADHD and her hormones are throwing her ADHD off. And I said to her, what do you think I said to her? I got somebody for you. <laughs> no, I did it's a whole you're... path. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I just I did that to someone else. No, I actually said to her, okay, there's nothing because she's beating herself up like so much. She's like, I started this project. I, 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 why can't I just finish what I'm doing? It's she's looking for the dopamine, right? She's like, oh, I'm a little bored of this now. I need to start this. I need to start this. I need to start this. And I said to her. You can't put so much pressure on yourself being like, oh my God, I'm a loser because I started this and I didn't finish it. And I, again, that is something that I've done a lot of work on and a lot of work around the narrative around it, where I don't say like, if I started something and I didn't finish it, that, oh, I don't beat myself up personally, but I kind of just have to let it go. But that's because I've worked on doing that narrative. So I said to her, you can't, you're, you're looking for dopamine. You're looking for excitement. That's completely understandable. Like 
you have to have some of that in your life because what she's doing is she's studying um, something that she's not loving, but it was one of the things that she picked up. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, for fuck's sake, like I kind of now just waited a year and a half. So she's adding something in to give her a little bit of that dopamine. I said, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But so why are you beating yourself up? She's like, because there's so many things that she just is not finishing. So I said to her, you have to make sure that coach, that executive functioning coach has the understanding. Like they could say, oh, I know how to work because they read it, but then you're going to continue to beat yourself up if it's not working because it's not the way your brain works. The the coach is actually totally attention deficit herself and, and has figured out how to help and maintain, you know, help clients be able to do this. But it's the same as like a therapist as you talk about all the time. 100%, you know, um, thank, thank goodness they, they do have it because that's just that piece that if you don't have it, you, you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever, it's, whenever I say uh, paper and pen, there's notes and, you know, lists and that, you know, because if I don't <laughs> see it, gone. Mm-hmm. See you later. You know, um, that's why, I, you know, I'm, my email, I always got to go back, you know, like I said, once a week or once every two weeks, my email, what did I miss? Go back. I do that. Notes. Yeah. What do I, you want to, you know, what, do I, what did I mess? Um, you know, cause if not our brains, you know, I always say our brains are a blender, you know, and our brain, brains are always on high. Now when that's on high, try and get a stra- try and put your hand in there and grab a strawberry. That's mm-hmm. like us trying to grab an ID and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like that. <laughs> A little bit, a little bloody in there in that blender wow. trying to get <laughs> Let's do a blender with no blades. You know, it's just spinning. You know, it's, yeah. it, you know, what is it? The tilt world or what? You know, it's just spinning. Oh, I liked that. You know, we, it's, you can't, we can't get going. These, you know, these things um, just spin and spin and spin. It's, it's not a thinking issue. It's what we think. <laughs> right oh, it's a doing it's getting going it's so every you, you talk about your your, your high schooler or, or a kid in college who, who has it they need you to grab their hand and start walking them mm-hmm. to that project or you know to that homework or to that to get to get to get started that's we don't have anybody grabbing our hand and we just spin and spin and spin and we think we can spin and do 55 different things because we don't have one thing leading and, you know, leading the charge. Uh, right. That's where that time blindness comes in. That's where it comes. And then that dopamine is we're creating that dopamine the whole time it's spinning. <laughs> right. And you have, and that's the, the beauty of the human brain is that you figured out, okay, I need to go back and look because I'll miss something, right? Um, I found, and I know you've heard me talk about it because I've tried to create one for the foundation, a Trello board. Um, because in the business that I'm doing, everyone has things that are like, okay, here's the to-do list. I ha- I don't like to-do lists because I usually lose them. Um, or there's, just, it's, it's a, this Trello board is like where all things that I need to have certain times and it's just good because then I can go back instead of having it replaying in my mind because that's when then the anxiety comes in, right? If you're mm-hmm. replaying, if you have too much going on and then you're replaying, replaying, replaying. You know, on my, you know, and I'll explain my side of it is I, I hate technology. Mm-hmm. You know, right, that, drill board, that, you know that Trello board is you know, a great idea and that's what, you know, these, these conversation is. It's, it's having all these what pieces, you know, it's, I don't like doing things on my phone, like yeah, text message or, you know, like you know, that kind of stuff, but to put anything on my phone, um, of that sort where I got to go back to, you know, uh, uh, to that, you know, let's use a trail board example. I don't like that. I don't, I, you know, I don't. You know, I get it because it doesn't, it do, you don't comprehend it. No. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go. You have to put that pen and paper yeah. to be able to comprehend it. And, um, and this is where, what's just interesting is that there is something where, you know, in, with dyslexia, we talk about the reading programs and then how right. the reading programs can actually help, right? You, For they sure. actually do work, right? Yeah. There's things with attention deficit that they do work. It's the giving ourselves like kind of like the grace to find it and allow it to work to say, you know what, I actually need a little help here. This isn't feeling good. And then figuring out strategies to help. That is what life is about, period, whether you have anything, right? No cookie cutter, one or two. 
Exactly. And acknowledging, this is where we always, like acknowledging your strengths and weaknesses, things that you have to work on. There's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, I actually like have a pile of clothes. You know, it, <laughs> do I shove them in places when we have people come over? Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> Can we talk about your kitchen? <laughs> 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 That's still like my favorite thing. I love talking about this. So, it's so. the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I we, we've also come to the conclusion the reason why I really don't like to cook is partly of my attention deficit because I cannot follow any of that and I like putting having a couple things on the stove, forget it. I'm overcooking, undercooking. That that there's no enjoyment. Like people are like, "Oh, it relaxes." No, I hate it. I hate um, it. Mm. Hate it, hate it, hate it. And it's really because of following those kind of things. It's just it's that that is really not my attention deficit. So my kids, because they know that I don't love to cook. So they've become pretty okay cooks because when they were kids, I did, and it sucked. Dan usually is the cook, but he's in the city a few days a week now. And so when we have the cleaning lady, um, if someone hasn't done their pots, okay. I shove hang them in on, the oven. And let's let's go back for it. So when they when they cook, they're supposed to clean, right? I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> you're not. I am not. I didn't use it. Why am I going to clean it? <laughs> so now I'll lead into what you just said. Yes. And I also get to say, because now it was like, okay, yes, I was to stay at home. But I'm sorry, you're going to, if you're going to make a mess, you clean it up. I'm not like, I'm not. I'm not following you around and cleaning your shit up, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta teach these kids some stuff. So, right, if they cook and they leave it on the stove, I once a week shove everything on the stove, on the counter, in the oven. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't have to clean it, and so, it's not the cleaning lady's job. She's there to help me kind of organize and keep things that are not so crazy because I don't like any of that. And I, that's, I will, I, I'll so get a third job to do that. I don't care. <laughs> now let's, let's, let's ask this. Why do women <laughs> clean for the cleaners? Okay. So I thought you were paying them to clean. So why is it that women have to clean before the fucking cleaner? I shouldn't say that. Everybody in the house better clean because because yes. woman's losing her mind because the cleaner's coming. <laughs> okay, so please elaborate on that for me, please. I don't yes. get that. Okay, so it's not the cleaning lady's job. Well, no, to, no, no, to like pick up after your messes. Like, there's a level of it, right? Like, yes, if I get stuck and I'm like, oh, you know, Olivia, do you mind? There's a couple pots, but like, no the kids should be doing their own stuff. Like I'm not having her empty the dishwasher like that. There's things that the well, kids, I'm not saying that the kids, you know, this yeah. is, but what's her job then? Is, well, is, is that not cleaning? <laughs> is that not cleaning? Yes, it is. And it probably okay. is because maybe it's a little messier than you actually want the cleaning lady to witness. And so you don't want her to think uh, that. <laughs> ah, so I think it's probably that. There, there comes the there key. We finally got there. We had to dig a little extra at this. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. The, right. During the week, because I'm not down following everyone around cleaning things up and everyone is a bit of a tornado in my world, um, <laughs> that it's like, okay. So how long does it take you to clean for the cleaners before you pay her to clean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the, I mean, the kids will take all their stuff on their floor and now put it on their beds. <laughs> <laughs> like I've taught them pretty well. Um, it is. I well, mean, I remember around Jayla used to stuff her, stuff her drawers. Yeah, I mean, a half an hour, forty minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's not like ten minutes. It's ridiculous. It is actually but, ridiculous. But you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> so then, what does she actually do while she's at your no, house? No, she does a more of a deep clean. Not a deep clean, but she'll get like I'll like just straighten up. Because there's there's papers, as I said, like the mail comes, I need to make it sure it's in a pile so it's not all over, you know, on the counter, so then she can clean the counter. The <laughs> I know, it sounds like there's a high, and it's not usually that much of a shit show, but if I have a busy week and I'm not doing anything and the kids and everyone's doing their own thing, I'll come down sometimes, I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, a, what, you, you're baking, you're doing this, you're cleaning, and no, yeah, so... 
I mean, that's that's a lot of insight into the on house. <laughs> um, and I was going to say something to right. So the oven, that's my favorite thing though, because now does that give you satisfaction? It does. I well, because it annoys everyone. <laughs> Everyone gets annoyed. They're like, where's this pot? Now they don't anymore. I mean, it's been years. Um, but they... You stuff the pots in the ovens dirty so yeah. that the cleaning lady can clean. Yeah, so she okay. doesn't have to So she doesn't have to clean those pots. It's not her... I don't think that's her job. That's not fair. I'd rather have her fold laundry. I'd rather have her fold laundry because I hate that. And the kids need to clean their own pots. So let's talk about <laughs> the, the hatred of folding laundry and doing dishes. Where do, they, where do those two stand? Because <laughs> Oh, I'd rather do dishes. I hate folding laundry. Hate it. I don't mind doing laundry. When was laundry. the last time you had a matching pair of socks? Actually, right now. Oh, come on. <laughs> I swear. I do. <laughs> How I did that you. happen? She- I, I told my <laughs> I'm going to show you because, because, um, cause the, I had a, a pile that the cleaning lady folded for me and she put them together. So here's one and here's two. It's oh forever. Um, but so that's what I love. And you know what, actually one of the times Truman was saying in Connecticut, one of his favorite memories when he was little, we had this cleaning lady named Kathy who, oh my God, I loved Kathy. She was the best and she was like really good. I mean, I had three little kids and she was like, you know, Juliet, I will do this. Don't worry. So she would fold and the kids, remember we talked about, they would dress themselves. So they would just pull everything out of their drawers, right? Like I want that shirt, whatever, like little monsters. (laughs) And she would, she loved organizing their drawers. So she would literally put them in like color coordinated and she would, she would spend a whole day with us and she was like the nicest, sweetest woman. And, and she would sometimes bring her like little niece and like the niece would play. And so she was just like organized and she would organize their drawers. And Truman said, he's like, it's still like one of my favorite memories coming home from school and my drawers being organized. And I was like, right. But then two seconds later, you would be throwing things out to find the orange shirt. He's like, yeah, but there was a satisfaction about it because no one's folding his clothes and putting them in his drawers unless it's him. I'm not doing that. You're not doing that. No. Fuck. No. I'm not Molly like and Molly Maker. Who the fuck do you think I am? Well, I, right. when I stayed I home. You. Now you do as I fucking tell you. To. <laughs> as I said, when I came home, uh, when I stayed home, I said that there's things that I'm really good at and things I'm really not good at. And being a homemaker, I am. No, I'm really not. I'm really not good at that. Yeah, you, Martha Stewart. <laughs> no, 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 not, not even the slightest. But I was going to say something before you got into the oven. What, what were you going to say? I don't remember now. Perfect. And it was really good. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it was the all or nothing. Oh, but there's... The Molly Maker side of you, it's been nothing. There's never been an all. Oh, no, I know. (laughs) Except there was, I mean, I said I used to do chicken surprise. I mean, I had to cook like five days a week when Dan was in. What what did you just say? A chicken surprise? I've never talked about chicken surprise. (laughs) What the fuck's a chicken surprise? Wait, this is really, this is really showing really my great (laughs) No, please, please tell me chicken surprise. Oh, talking about the weaknesses and strengths. Um. Okay, so uh, Dan worked in the city, I, I and super healthy. Like I, I cooked super healthy, but basically yeah, the kids a are like tree hugger. Yeah, but they were like, "There's no taste to it," because <laughs> I don't know how to use spices, right? Or I'd put all the wrong spices in it. I would just literally put it on the stove and just be like, "Oh, I'm just going to dump a bunch of shit in it." So for years, five days a week. I would make the kids something. Usually it was like probably like pasta and I would put vegetables in it. And then the one day they were like, we go to other people's houses and no one has vegetables in their pasta. I was like, damn it. Uh, I used to do like olive oil and that was like that or, like, you know, I mean like simple things, but like I was not making three course meals. But for Dan, I couldn't make him like pasta with vegetables. So I would make chicken and usually it was chicken and it was whatever vegetable because I loved whole foods. I would go to whole, so I had all fresh stuff. I mean, I had great ingredients and I would shove everything in a, um, it's like the lay corset. Like, I don't even think I'm saying it right, but like almost like the the big heavy pots. I would shove it. Yeah. Shove all of the stuff in there. 
And then I would, whatever, like if it was like a salad dressing or, and the surprise was you didn't know what vegetable or (laughs) sauce was going to be on it. And the surprise was, is the chicken going to be so overcooked that it's so dry um, or wasn't going to be slightly raw? (laughs) So for years, poor Dan would come home and be like, okay, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I see why he's the cook now. <laughs> well, no, he was always the cook, but I, I mean, he didn't get home until eight or whatever. So he didn't. Yes. Um, and I want to say I was a little bit better. I mean, my sister and I were at like, our kids were young. So she would give me recipes. I would have friends. Like, no. oh, were they in cookbooks? Yes. We're, we're cleaning the kitchen the other day, finding cookbooks. Remember the, the good yes. cook, cook, cookbook Good days? Yeah. Yeah. And crock pot stuff. I would, I could fuck up a crock pot recipe. I'm like, how can you fuck up a crock pot recipe? I don't know. I can fuck up a crock. Yep. Uh-huh. So there's a little insight of all my, my uh, <laughs> really good strengths. But the all or nothing, because I do want to talk about that. And it is, the all or nothing is, I really do think that is a big attention deficit trait that is not talked about as much because there's no turn off switch. Uh, Do you no. have a turn off switch? <laughs> Go for one beer, 100? No, I know. But back in the day, so like you didn't have a turn off switch either, right? Well, it, it was this or that. You know, there was no, I can have one or two or no, no. I know you have your candy, I, but I don't, I, I would eat that whole thing in one day and then feel like crap and want to die. Well. <laughs> It's sour, so uh, you know, as I eat, you know, three or four, you know, and then I get sour, and I'm like, <laughs> right. And so we we had a whole bag of Reese's Pieces last night. Tim, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So, um. But do you agree with me that you think attention deficit, there's an all or nothing component to that? Or is that more of a personality thing? No, I agree with you. And it's the dopamine, right? Yeah. We keep chasing it, right? We keep chasing it. We like something, right? We're diving into it. We're succeeding. We keep going down that rabbit hole. We keep chasing it. It's all or nothing is... It comes down to that dopamine chase. Mm-hmm. I yeah, said, I have to work like really hard not to. Oh, it's it's a full time job to not to because we're you no know, we're chasing that you know that dopamine you know I always you know obviously I always say sex drugs rock and roll people always laugh and, but that's you know, we did crazy things like that and when you're succeeding at something, you're all in on something, or it feels good to be all in on something and succeeding and getting that dopamine. Mm-hmm. So it's hard. It's a full-time job not to be able to ha- not go down that hole uh, and chase that. Yeah. And I think that there's, again, there's like extremes, but we, like my friends and I will always laugh. Like I never had like one popsicle. Oh no. Like I would have to have the whole box. Like I never had one piece of candy. Like I would have to eat the whole bag and I would sit there. And even if it sat there, it would be like, I'd be like, Oh my God, don't have it. You can't have it. Just have one, just have fucking one. Same with alcohol. You know, like I never had one, like people are like, well, just, you have to have one glass. And I'm like, no, I have one glass. And then my brain's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I want more. I want more. I want more. You're with two hands for a reason. I need two beers. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Right. But that is something that when kids are little, because again, that active versus hyperactivity, it's very different. Yeah. You can be active, but not be like, and and be one of those kids that can't sit still, but not have attention deficit. So there are like very specific things. And so I think that, you know, our society now, because everyone is so all over the place doing all these things, there's some, some misdiagnosis. I mean, there is things that are very key to being well, attention deficit. I remember shit, when this had been a couple years ago, probably. Yeah, probably a couple of good two or three years ago. I was in the doctor's office and I was talking to the nurse about you know, how many people 
or in you know comes to the office of ADHD and I I start started talking about dopamine and all these kind of things. She looked at me, she goes, You know a lot about this because you've said things that I don't even know. <laughs> you know, so it's people are are getting it getting um diagnosed by doctors that you know some of them don't even don't even really have a full understanding of what what this all is mm-hmm. you know and what, what you know why you um prescribe is it adderall is it, is it uh, vivance is it concerta is it ritalin uh, you know um are you doing capsules are you doing 24-hour release are you doing you know she was looking at me like she goes how do you know all this stuff and why I say that is just a prime example of, uh, you know, what, what the foundation is. I talk to people, give them the full understanding of what all that is. Then you make the best decision for for yourself or your child. I'm, I'm yeah. not, yeah, you know, I'm not telling you what to do with your child, but I want to give you the full information that is out there and why um, these um, drugs are a gateway drug because I've lived it. So. Um, that's why I talk open science, but she was, it was kind of shocking for her to say that she, I know more than she is, you know, and she's a nurse and the, I know more than some of the doctors that she's worked with, um, and when regarding this information. Yeah. Well, I mean, because that's the thing, because it, it, it is, there's so much out there. And that is, I mean, with attention deficit, you know, there's so much out there. there's been over the years. I mean, that is one thing that has been diagnosed. But there's also it's been very misdiagnosed. I mean, I've known people that they put their kid on meds and they like the kid literally was like the zombie, right? Because the teacher's like, oh, they can't sit still. And let's yeah. let's over medicate. And that I mean, that just kills me every time I'm like, oh my God, like you, you have to be able to know you have to. And that was, you know, and I think, you know, to, to cut and to jump in there, you, you, we talked during the last episode of schools, um, for kids with learning disorders, the one, the one school, uh, the one, one family came to me and said, there's eight, eight, eight kids in the class. Um, if I asked the other seven kids the question first and ask him last. I've got to, I've got to ask him, I got to ask him the question first because he doesn't remember. He's ADHD. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yes, of course, you fucking idiot. So that tell, you know, I'm like, I told the family, I said, these, these people have no idea because her request was to give him more medicine. Right. You, I, you got to ask me that. Yeah. And that's so that's, you know, off our responding to our last time we talked about, you know, going to schools with, uh, you know, that dyslexia, if it's a, you know, um, learning differences uh, or just for dyslexia or whatever, you have to remember because there's a prime example. She has zero clue about ADHD and she came back and wanted to up the medicines. Right. Which is just so like. I, and I and I'm not going to get specific on this, but I knew a child that was in a school and came home to their parent and said, "I think there's everyone takes like everyone goes to the nurse to take meds. I'm the only one." Yeah. And and it is again if it's for your family and it's the only thing, but there's other <laughs> homeopathic stuff, but there's other things in the world that you can well, do to um to help not saying that that you know i think you need to know your body you need to know your child's body you need to know your family and all of those things before you can make that educated decision on meds versus not meds yeah again again we just i you know i tell tell these stories because i've lived it right and i live the the rehab situation i live the gateway drug situation Mm -hmm. um what I just said for a prime example, the teacher, she doesn't have it. She's getting paid. She doesn't care about the kid. She wants him medicated more. So it makes her job easier. Not right. for the kid. And that, right. Then that's where the education and talking needs to happen. Right. right. I'm going to leave it at that. That was, <laughs> that was an attention deficit episode. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Cleaning. 
<laughs> I know, right? Oh my God. Now everyone's like, oh, wow, we know what, I mean, yeah, when people laugh and they're like, you have it all together. And I'm like, open my door. <laughs> oh, somebody's like, how's your brain? I'm like, I'm like, you wouldn't want to spend five minutes in this head. Yeah. Like if everyone just saw my desk right now, but, and I'm, I'm so I, I do want to say some people can live a little bit more in chaos. Like this, my, well, my piles don't stress me out. They stress and, other people out. They don't, not in my house. I'm actually very fortunate that everyone, like I don't, Dan is like fine with them. I know friends that <laughs> the opposite, right? Their husband or wife are like neat freaks. And it's like, everyone's on each other's shit. Like if my kids want to have a messy room, I don't, have a messy room. Just close yeah, your I'm, fucking door. I don't care. Well, you know, another, you know, on the last topic is most people, you know, in stressful situations with ADHD handle them better because w- we give yeah. off different, um, um, dopamine isn't the right word into our brain in a stressful situation, stressful situation with ADHD people actually calm us down rather than give us the exact, exact opposite of what everybody else is. So, yeah. Um, in very, Firemen, stressful, right? yeah, very yeah. stressful situations, we actually calm down and are able to handle the situation better than, than other people, um, uh, because of what it triggers in the brain. Isn't our adrenaline isn't, doesn't have something to do with that or cortisol or something. Cortisol, it's got to do with all of them, but there's one that, um, triggers uh in, you know into into the brain i can't remember what it is to, to, to calm us down so yeah, yeah. A stressful situation that's why like, you know you know in jobs and all this stuff yeah we look like we're completely disasters but when it comes to those stressful situations we handle it you know there's not, we, like, you know, move, that's the reason why yeah we like yeah. move through it smooth that you could see like if you picture like a slow motion kind of a, a, a someone's life and like slow motion of like, Oh wait, that looks a mess. And all of a sudden there's like a massive cat- catastrophe. And that person that's like seeming like they're a little spazzy is like, Doop. I, got you. <laughs> I got this. Exactly. <laughs> you knew exactly what my slow motion thing was. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> And if you have a question, if you have attention deficit, if you were able to follow this and you weren't like, oh boy, you probably have attention deficit. (laughs) We self-diagnosed you. (laughs) Thank you for joining another episode of Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. Uh, I, you know what I say it every single time, like like, rate, review and share because you don't know who doesn't know (laughs) if they have attention deficit (laughs) or not. All right. Thanks, Brent, for recording on a Wednesday. Thanks, Molly Maid. <laughs> <laughs>